Hi there, Slow Down Society. Let's talk podcasting. Have you ever wanted to start a podcast of your very own? I wanted to alert you that Riverside.fm is the leading podcast and video creation platform. It's just as easy to use as Zoom. And trust me, I am not techie. I think we all know that. But this is super easy to use and they even have a mobile app. Also, a super crazy cool feature about Riverside.fm is that after you record, you can easily grab clips and sound bites to share across your social media channels. If you're ready to plunge into the fun and exciting world of podcasting, you really can't go wrong with Riverside FM. Use the promo code SHIPIT, that is S-H-I-P-I-T, for an immediate 30% discount on your first three months. Okay, back to the episode. You are listening to the Slow Living Podcast, and I'm your host, Stephanie O'Day. What if I told you that you could truly have the life of your dreams, the life you've always wanted, one filled with abundance, joy, and a sense of purpose? It's absolutely possible, and I see it each and every day with my coaching clients. It all starts with learning how to slow down. You deserve to live the life you've always dreamt about. Let's get started. Hello there, Slow Down Society. We are on number 13, episode 13, and we are going to talk New Year's resolutions. New year, new you. And I've got to tell you, I love New Year's. I love the clean slate. I love the possibility of more and tweaking things just a little bit for the better. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And whether or not you think New Year's resolutions work or they don't, you're right. Because it's all about your mindset. And it's all about whether or not you believe that you have the ability to change, that you have the ability to tweak, have the ability to see more for yourself, and you're not stuck in a groove or in a rut, which is really just a groove (laughs) that you've been in for a very long time of thinking, this is as good as it gets. This is my lot in life. This is how it's always been. None of those thoughts are exciting. And that's what I want for you. I want you to have excitement when you wake up in the morning, I want you to flip over the calendar page of a new month, of a new week, of a new year, of a new birth year with excitement and hope and the feeling of possibility that the best is yet to come. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I do have a recorded question from Sarah and we're going to get into that. But I want you to take the time, if you haven't done so already, the last episode, episode 12, we talked about taking stock of the here and now. And if you haven't already listened to that episode, I absolutely recommend that you do that. I don't like rules just for the sake of making rules, so I'm not going to make you pause this right now and go listen to the previous episode You do you, you follow your gut, you follow your intuition. And when this is done, then fine, go back and do it. Unless you, you do want to stop right now and go back and listen. It's absolutely fine. When I started this project, I didn't have the thought or the belief or the intention that they would be listened to in a specific order. I thought I could just sort of, I don't know brain dump on you, and then somehow they would all come together in a cohesive way. That's not what ended up happening. My brain sort of did this breadcrumb kind of Hansel and Gretel approach of laying out the framework and having you sort of follow the trail to, I don't know, Indiana Jones would call it the Holy Grail. And I don't think I have the Holy Grail because my life is, is still unfolding. But I want for you to follow your own path, chart your own path, program your GPS, 
and have this vision and have this overarching goal and dream for yourself that you're probably not going to get to in only one calendar year. And that's okay, but it doesn't mean you give up. It doesn't mean that you pack up your toys and go home. It means that you perhaps tweak or perhaps modify, but you keep going forward, baby steps at a time. So in episode 12, we talked about paying attention and really focusing and acknowledging and accepting the here and now. And I had some journaling pages that I wanted you to download and you can download them at stephanieoday.com forward slash new you. And whether or not you're listening to this right around New Year's or you're listening to this in the middle of April or in the middle of August, that's fine. It really doesn't matter because you can decide whenever you want that this is it. This is the line in the sand. Tomorrow, today, the next hour, the next minute starts the new me, the new you. So download those pages, stephanieoday.com forward slash new you and take an honest assessment of where you are right now because that is your starting point. And then from there, we can dream big and we can plot out the end goal and we can envision the GPS and where it is you're headed. So I got my start writing online and and writing books because I followed through on my new year's resolution. And every year at the end of the calendar year and the beginning of the next one, I start getting uh, some media attention again. I'm going on the radio in a few hours to WGN Chicago. So if you hear me on the radio, always write to me and let me know because it's exciting to know that there's real people out there and I'm not just talking (laughs) into a microphone. But I get asked tips and techniques and how to stick with your New Year's resolutions. I think we've all heard the statistics that most people give up rather quickly, certainly by the first or second week of February. But for a lot of people, maybe it's Super Bowl weekend, the end of January, and they fall off the wagon of whatever it was that they decided they were going to do. And for a lot of people, it's taking care of their health, trying to put their self-care and their health First and foremost, a lot of the people that I work with classify themselves as caregivers. They're either moms or they're perhaps in that sandwich generation where not only are they taking care of their children, but they're taking care of their ailing parents. I work with a lot of teachers. I work with a lot of nurses. And those professions in general sort of do a lot of self-sacrificing and they're trying to help others. And when you are deciding to make a resolution to better yourself, sometimes it feels like that means you are taking away from those you're caring for. And I want to give you a permission slip right now. And this is permission for you to put your needs and your wants and your desires first. And if you haven't done that before, it can be a little scary. And it means that you're saying goodbye to the old version of you in order to make room and grow into the new version of you. So when we went through the first few episodes of this podcast and I started talking about one of the first steps, the first step to slow living is to declutter, is to prom, to purge, remove, organize, maintain, but declutter the old you and get rid of the old beliefs and the old actions and the old mindset that's holding you back from the new you. And so take some time, take some time with your journal, fill out those pages and acknowledge and pay attention that all of the things that have gotten you where you are right here, right now are wonderful and cherish them and be thankful and grateful for all of those things, all of those people, all of those steps, all of those habits and actions that you've taken that have gotten you right here. And then 
if you need to, start purging, start decluttering the actions and the habits and the people and the things that aren't going to get you to the next step, to the next place that you're trying to do. Are you wondering if you're on the right path? Are you secretly worried that you are forgetting to put your own needs and wants first while you raise your family? What if I told you it is not too late and you really could have the dream life you've always wanted and all it would take is a few tweaks to your mindset? Each week, I have a few open slots for free coaching calls. Together, we can decipher your most challenging mindset block and clear it away so you can live out the life you've always wanted. You can sign up at stephanieoday.com forward slash mindset. You should hurry because I'm not sure how long I'm going to have this available for free and I'd hate for you to miss out. The URL again is stephanieoday.com forward slash mindset. Okay, I have a listener question about New Year's resolutions from Sarah. So let me play that for you right now. Hi, Stephanie. I have a question about how to properly set New Year's resolutions. I have a habit of making them and then not sticking with them, so I never get very far. I'd like to focus on my health this year and finally get off some of my medications. Do you have any advice on how to make my resolutions stick? That is a fantastic question, and I'm really happy that you took the time to write to me and to record that question. I really appreciate it. So I want you to look at your end goal. You said that this was going to be the year that you decided to focus on your health and try and get off some of the medication that you happen to be on. Now, I am most certainly not a doctor in any sense of the imagination, and I'm not going to play one on this podcast in any way. So while you are charting out your course, I want you to really check in with your doctor and pay attention to all of the things and follow your doctor's advice and absolutely do not discontinue any medication without proper medical advice and following a protocol. That said, I think you can make steps towards bettering your health easily and right now right this very second. And so when you're planning a goal and when you're planning a resolution, all you need to know is where you are and which is usually where you'd prefer not to be. So where you are right now is a person who doesn't feel healthy and happens to be taking some medication. And then the next point is your desired state, where it is you want to be. And so if you've got a line graph with your starting point and your ending point, what you're trying to do is fill in all of those hash marks along your line graph. And those are your daily habits. And those are the things that you do each and every day. Some of them consciously, lots of them unconsciously. But you are going to stop and you are going to pause and you are going to take a deep breath and you are going to live slowly and you are going to pay attention to the here and the now and you are going to be present. And because of that, you are going to stop when you see that you're doing a habit or an activity or you're self-sabotaging in some way. And you're going to fill in that line graph and all of the hash marks and the tick marks with new habits that you've decided to create. And that's all change is. Change is just stacking good habits and and habits that will get you where you want to go. And what's tricky is a lot of people start their New Year's with the idea that, I don't know, like they have this etch-a-sketch of life and they're going to absolutely destroy it and they're going to shake it all up and, and have a clean slate. 
and rip off the Band-Aid and any other metaphor you can think of. And oh, God only knows, I really like metaphors and I, and I like to, to envision things in that way. So use whatever metaphor or envisioning that you want to do. I actually really happen to like making vision boards for the New Year's. And I spend time, probably a few days, plotting out what I want to put on my vision board and then cutting out magazine pictures that fulfill that dream. And so if your end goal dream is to be a super healthy person who doesn't need whatever medication you want, uh, excuse me, doesn't need the medication that you're currently on, what does that person look like? Does that person look like a strong, fit, healthy person? Does that person drink water? Does that person do a certain amount of exercise each week or each day? Does that person rein in her sugar, her calories? Does she embrace intermittent fasting? What does she do? Does she do yoga? Does she get enough sleep? Does she sort of retrain her time management skills and start getting up early and self-serving herself in that way? Does her house reflect her goals? Is it decluttered? They say a, a cluttered space equals a cluttered mind and a cluttered mind equals a cluttered body. And there's absolutely such thing as body clutter. So pay attention to all those things, but don't feel like you have to do all of the new changes right away. So I've said it before, I'm going to say it again, and I'm sure you're tired of hearing about hearing it, but it, uh, repetition works. And if we're lucky, life is long. So don't try and cram all the change and all the newness into the first week of January. Don't do that. So I like 30 day challenges and my 30 days to a new year journal is very helpful in that way. And I buy my, my own journal and I buy 10 or 12 at a time. Honestly, I buy 10 at a time and I will explain to you why in a few minutes and map out what is it that you would like at the end of the year. I want to drink eight glasses of water a day. Okay, great. That is your first 30 day challenge. That is the only thing, the only thing you're going to focus on is drinking the certain amount of ounces that you believe you should drink each day. Many people take their body weight and then cut it in half and they drink that in ounces a day. So if you weigh 120 pounds, your, your daily allotment of water is 60 ounces. That's direct math. And that would be your goal. But that's the only habit you're going to break, you're going to start and break into. And why? Because that habit is going to have a ripple effect. All of a sudden, because you're focusing on that one thing, you are going to find that you're automatically probably eating less food because you're more full. You're probably going to spend a lot more time in the bathroom and you're going to need to buy some more toilet paper and things like that. But, but there will be a ripple effect by focusing on that one habit and that one idea and uh, if you miss day 12 or day 15 out of your 30 days, that doesn't mean anything. It, it doesn't mean anything. You're racking up 30 days. If it takes you 42 days to get 30 days of drinking water under your belt, that is fine. That is not a big deal. So that's why when I said a few minutes ago, I actually buy 10 journals a year instead of 12. That's because I know myself. I sometimes don't journal on the weekends. I, if we travel, I miss a few days here and there, but I do not beat myself up because this is real life. This is not Pinterest. This is not Instagram. This is not a glossy magazine or HGTV. This is real life. And think about it. Any little bit you do is better than the nothing that you've been doing before. 
So if you've done 30 days of drinking a certain amount of water and you feel better, but you do it in 40 days or 45 days, that's fine. So you've got that new habit. Now stack it. Add in something else. Maybe you got a pedometer for the holidays and you're going to start doing 8,000 or 10,000 steps a day, no matter what. Okay, you're going to drink your water and you're going to go on some walks. And those are your next your, your next habit and you're going to stack them. And at the end of the year, maybe you are drinking your water and taking your 10,000 steps. And maybe you've taken up yoga and maybe you've decided uh, in... May or June or July that you are going to go to bed no matter what at 9 p.m. every night and get up no matter what at 5 a.m. and you're finally sticking to a schedule. That is another great habit. But you decide what a healthy person does and you focus on that. So Sarah's question was or whether or not I did New Year's resolutions. So that's yes. And then she had a second part in that she had a goal of getting off the medication. So that was the big vision of getting off the medication. And again, she absolutely needs to talk to her doctor, but she's doing the things that a healthy person would do. And probably most likely her doctor will take a look at her numbers and perhaps tweak the prescription and modify. Will she be healthier Even if the doctor says, you know what, I'm really sorry, but you actually have a genetic disposition and I need you to continue to take this medication. So if if that's what happens, does that mean she failed? Does that mean she's not healthier because she continued to drink the water and she continued to do the steps and she continued to get a good night's sleep, even though some doctor didn't give her the certificate of completion, does that mean she failed? No. Failure is, is just an idea you've got in your brain. She needs to give herself a cold star for every single day, every day. She makes the right choice and she does the right thing, even when she doesn't want to do it. And that really is the definition of discipline, of paying attention to what you want most versus what you want right this very second. And some would argue that that's also the definition of being a full-fledged adult, of delaying your instant gratification. And I've got to tell you, your, your brain will always want the brownie instead of, I don't know, the kale salad. It always will. So you have to sort of train your brain to suspend your instant gratification Does that mean, Sarah, that you can never have a brownie ever again? No, no. Remember, if we're lucky, life is long. So plan for it. For your 30 days, how about every 10 days you reward yourself for for continuing on? And maybe you do go to a bakery and get yourself a nice big fluffy brownie filled with walnuts and, and all of the things. And it doesn't mean you failed. And it doesn't mean you derailed because you are so much better and so much stronger and have achieved so much more by doing all of the other things that you're doing on a daily basis. So there you go. I hope that helped. Again, go and download those end of the year, beginning of the year journal pages at stephanieoday.com forward slash new you. Shoot me an email record a a message. If this brings up your own questions and you have your own, but whys or, but ifs, or tell me about this Steph question, leave me a voicemail The you can shoot me an email or you can record it at stephanieoday.com forward slash podcast. There's a recorder app right in there, but That is it for now, and I will see you in the next episode, the next week. We're going to start talking about how to plan for real life and what to do when you do not feel motivated. New Year's is kind of this natural 
drive and, and you feel excited and you feel flutters in your stomach and you're excited to take on new challenges and real life happens and energy dips and you're not going to feel motivated when it's cold outside and it's March 12th and you haven't seen any difference in the scale or in your bank account, or you look in the mirror and you're still not happy. So how do you keep keeping on when you're no longer motivated? We're going to talk about that in the next episode. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Slow Down Society, and have a great day. Do you have a slow living story to share? Leave me a voicemail at stephanieoday.com forward slash podcast with any questions, comments, feedback, or testimonials, and I will be sure to include it in an upcoming episode. Also, if you found value in this episode, please share it with your family and friends and subscribe through your favorite podcast provider. The more you share, comment, and leave positive reviews, the more people we can reach and share the slow living lifestyle and messaging. Thank you, Slow Down Society, and have an absolutely wonderful day.